Hi, I'm Mike Blossberg. And I'm JJ Plank. Hey, JJ. Have you ever noticed the further away you get from a light source, the dimmer it looks? I have. And in fact, we can measure that relationship using the Pasco wireless light sensor. Cool. But to do that, we're going to need a little more than just the sensor. We're going to actually have to set up a little experiment like what we have here. OK. Um, and in fact, uh, we can use any light source, but I decided to go ahead and use the flashlight on my phone. It's easy. It's quick. I had it in my pocket. And then uh, we got a meter stick. So we're going to use the light sensor to measure the intensity of that light source mm -hmm. at different distances. And we're going to use the meter stick to help us tell what distance the sensor is at. OK. OK. In conjunction with that, we've got a computer set up here that's going to help us visualize that data. Uh, and what I've got going on is uh, a table display on the left and a graph display on the right. And the, uh, the data that we type into the table is going to automatically show up in that graph. Uh, the first column here is distance. Uh, because we don't have a distance sensor, what we're going to do is actually type the distance values in by hand. Okay. Uh, and then the second column is the white light intensity values measured by the sensor, which are going to be done automatically using the software. OK, so let's go ahead and do our experiment. But before we can actually record the data from the sensor, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and punch in the values uh, for distance that we're going to use in our experiment. And I recommend we use 5 centimeter increments. All right, let's go from 5 to 35 centimeters. All right, so to do that, all I'm going to do here is click in the cell and go ahead and start typing in my distance values, starting at 5 centimeters and going to 35, just like that. Great. OK, one thing I want to point out, though, uh, the software has been pre-configured to record data only one data point at a time. It's called manual sampling. So what we can do is we click start, and then we'll tell it to record data only at specific times. That way, we can move its position and set it to where we need it, and then record the intensity value. OK. All right. I'll go ahead and turn on the sensor. OK. And so to connect that sensor, we're going to do it just like we do with all our other Bluetooth sensors. We go here into the Bluetooth icon, find the sensor in the list, click on it. Now it's connected. We'll click Done, and we're actually ready to start recording data. All right. I'll place it here at 5 centimeters from our light source. OK. That's our first distance value. I'm going to click this green button here. That begins data collection, but we're not actually recording data until we click the green check mark, and we're going to do it one at a time. OK. OK. So we're at 5 centimeters. I'm going to click that green check mark. I'll move it to 10 centimeters. Awesome. I'm going to wait for it to stabilize. Click the green check. And 15. OK. Check. 20. OK. 25. OK. 30. OK. And the last one at 35. All right. And then after we've collected that last intensity data point, we just click that orange square button to stop data collection, and there's our data. Wow. As we move away from the light source, the intensity really drops off, but it doesn't look linear. Yeah, and in fact, um, if we want to figure out what the mathematical model is for our data, we can use some of these curve fits built into the software. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on an inverse square fit. And as you can see, that red inverse square curve fit goes mm -hmm. right through the data points there, implying that, in fact, the relationship between light intensity and distance is an inverse squared relationship. So if I double the distance, the light intensity is a quarter as much. Exactly, and that helps explain things like why some planets really close to the sun are really mm -hmm. hot, and other planets that aren't very much further away are much cooler. OK. If you want to repeat this lab activity with your students, you can download the file at pasco.com. Thanks for watching.